Sun City is more than a town. It is the remedy to Ponykind's derailment. Day 7. Time. Approximately 11 p.m. Location. Sun City Suburbs. Big 52. SC Branch. The trip to the city had been quite long, and by the time Puppy arrived at the first houses, darkness had already descended upon the streets. Sun City featured a central group of commercial and administrative buildings, surrounded by residential areas. However, there were no lights in any window, nor signs of any pony living there. The neighborhood Puppy was trotting through had been almost completely scavenged for construction materials, leaving only skeletons of housing resting in the ever-present sand. It was like a desolate boneyard, filled with carcasses that had once been called home. Now, Puppy wasn't eager to admit that she was still a little afraid of the dark, but the whole place was a little too similar to her first day in the apocalypse to just let her shrug it off and keep going. Why that chicken had to be in such a dangerous and scary place? Stupid Henry, there's no pony here. Why call it a city if it's empty? Each step took her deeper into that scary place. Where did the colorful signs go? Puppy never went out very much at night, but she was pretty sure that a city didn't work like this. She wanted some music to hide the sound of the wind howling through the bony houses. But the radio had gone mute when the filly reached Sun City's outskirts, and the unusual silence made her feel lonely. Hey, Mr. Voice. You there? A discharge of static was the only answer Puppy got from the suit. Caution. Checked. Electric. Clearance. Sybil. Sustaining. Volt. Fearance. Ah, he's grumpy again. The filly frowned and kept trotting. The HUD on the helmet started to display written warnings on the screen but showing fast-scrolling technical messages to a foal that could barely read without spelling every letter was a waste of time. This left the filly completely alone. The radio was gone, Mr. Voice was gone. This was like those times when she tried to sleep, but, but the room was too dark and the wind outside made strange noises. They were the nights where she'd hid under the sheets and called out to her mother until she came and nuzzled her, singing a little lullaby to make her feel safe and warm. Puppily actually tried to sing something, but the only thing she could think of right now was the Evil Enchantress song, and no, it didn't help at all. The little pony's steps echoed in her head like the beat of drums as Puppy walked through the never-ending maze of identical streets, with every empty window reflecting an eerie pink glow. What was that? Maybe Mr. Horsetile came back from the grave and was following her? Even Mr. Horsetile would have been welcome at this point. A distant metallic screeching noise filled the filly and froze her in her place. Her rump hit the asphalt and she completely stopped moving. What, 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 what's, what's that? Sure, dealing with bully bots and running after mom was not a frightening thing. Having to face ghouly ponies could be scary, but at least you knew what you were fighting. But this one was different. An empty town filled with empty houses and crisscrossed by empty roads during a clouded night. And with ghostly sounds, too. Why did she think about ghosts now? No ghosts. Bad ghosts. Why did she leave the red banner tra trail? Miss Pretty Pony, happy, told her not to leave the trail. But she had to come and help that stupid chicken, and now it was dark and it was scary. And Puppy missed Miss Silky Tail very much. The filly flattened herself against the road and lowered her ears, trying to make herself disappear. New plan. We wait here till it's day. Another creak echoed through the empty streets, like the suffering wail of a tortured soul. Eh? Puppy jumped to all four hooves and started galloping faster than Rainbow Dash at the running of the leaves. New plan. We're out of here till it's day. Sun City 1. Puppy 0. Day 8. Time. Approximately 8 a.m. Location. Sun City. Big 52. SC. Branch. During the day, the city was quite similar to the suburbs of Salt Cube City, or even Canterlot. Not scary at all, just... ugly. Puppy wondered why she had been so scared. <laughs> what a silly pony she was. 
See, Mr. Voice? There's nothing to be afraid of. Just another town with broken houses and broken roads and... For a moment, Puppy's eyes caught sight of a silhouette of a flying pony. And pretty Pegasus this is! Yay! The foal launched herself into a gallop, chasing the flying figure. Hey! Hey, Mr. Pegasus! Wait for me! Wait! Galloping at top speed while looking into the sky, Puppy wasn't properly watching the road in front of her and collided with another pony in the middle of the street. Owie. How'd you look where you're going? I was running here before you. The pony was an adult earth stallion with a brown coat and black mane. He'd been carrying buckets full of bricks and housing materials on his back. But now everything was scattered all over the asphalt. Puppy jumped onto her hooves, ready to zoom away just in case the older pony was mad at her. But he simply put down the bucket and started filling them again. Uh, yeah, you better say nothing. And don't stay in the middle of the road again like a dumb statue. Puppy stuck her tongue out but noticed the earth pony wasn't paying much attention to her. Actually, he seemed a bit... Well, how to put it. Uh, Mr. Pony? Are you deaf? I'm Puppy Smiles, and I'm looking for my mom. Well, usually I do that, but today I'm saving my friend Henry that came here and then had some sort of troubles. But I don't know what kind of troubles. Have you seen her? She's a chicken, but she doesn't want me to call her that way. But, I mean, duh, she has a beak and feathers and everything else. She must totally be a chicken. Once, I knew a pony that was a zebra. But I don't know why zebras don't like p ponies. Anyway, this zebra didn't like to be called a zebra, but every pony called her that all the same. So maybe she's just like zebras? Maybe ponies don't like chickens here, and... I don't know. Puppy followed behind the earth pony as he, without saying a word, gathered everything that he had dropped and headed towards the center of town. In the light of day, Puppy could see that past the outer town borders, the houses had been completely dismantled, leaving a vast area of flat terrain traversed by an intricate web of paved streets and a ring of at least 200 meters around the downtown area. It seemed like some sort of no-pony's land, but it was the result of a methodical demolition of every building that had stood in the area, brick by brick, instead of simply flattened the houses. There weren't even anything in the ruins as defensive positions. The buildings had been salvaged down to their foundations. Puppy stopped and gazed in wonder at the shining city that lay in the heart of the empty land. Wow! You have a pretty town here, at least. I like it. Right in front of the filly in yellow stood a city of old times. There were some small houses with painted walls and clean windows. No holes in their roofs nor planks nailed over the doors. Puppy stared at the ponies trotting around and carrying things. It was a lively place. Every pony was doing something. Even the foals and the pegasi. There were pretty houses and pretty skyscrapers. Even if the gardens were a little yellowish, there was actual grass in the yards. And there was even trees here and there. Puppy wouldn't have given this place more than a 6 out of 10. But hey, this was the first town along her way that deserved to vote at all. Really? Happy was super wrong. Puppy trod after the brown pony she had bumped into earlier. Ponies that arrived here actually liked us so much they didn't want to leave. I was right as usual. Ah, take that, Miss Happy. Sure you aren't very chatty, Mr. Pony. Nope, not chatty at all. Puppy decided to leave the Earth Pony and wander by herself so she could check out the place more. It was really a nice town and reminded her of some of the places she had visited with her mom. After eight days of wasteland, being in such a nice place was refreshing. Even if the ponies had something wrong with them that Puppy couldn't put her hoof on. The filly in yellow searched the area for some other ponies to talk to, and noticed a griffin crouched on a roof. He was replacing some damaged chiles. Hey, Mr. Chicken, have you seen my friend Henry? She's a chicken too. Nope, no answer at all. In this place, every pony had to be deaf or really unfriendly. Puppy saw a unicorn mare watering a tree, and tried to approach. Ah, uh, excuse me, Miss Pretty Pony. Have you seen a chicken named Henrietta, please? Nothing again. The filly's frustration was growing. It was quite obvious that she was getting nowhere. The situation needed something better. Ah, uh, she's half kitty, too. The unicorn kept watering the tree despite Puppy's efforts. 
but this time the filly wasn't going to give up that easily. She put herself physically between the tree and the unicorn, staring at her right in the eyes, and... and... Ah, uh, your eyes are weird. The mare had a wall-eyed expression and seemed frankly dumb. How do you make that trick with the eyes? Puppy tried crossing her eyes and almost fell on a rump. It's hard. How can you look straight with eyes like that? Again, the foal was completely ignored. The mare tried to circle around Puppy a couple of times, but the filly in yellow insisted on staying between the unicorn and her tree. In the end, she watered Puppy's head and went away. Puppy was now wet and upset. Hey, it's not very nice. What's up with every pony here? Why do they want to talk with me? Do I stink? The filly tried sniffing herself, but it was quite pointless while she was sealed inside the suit. The foal wandered around the neighborhood for half the morning, trying to find some pony who would talk to her, but everywhere was the same. Every pony had the same wall-eyed expression and didn't listen to her. Not even the ghoulies. She could remember something like this. A movie with a strange title that her mom forbid her to watch. Metron remember... Anyway, she tried looking at it, but it was boring to death. The city was like the same, like a warped reflection of the barns of horror where fun could actually kill you, where the boredom could turn you into stone. Her expression took the filly deeper inside the town, and no pony tried to stop her or seemed to acknowledge her passing, even when puppy approached some foals trying to play with them. They simply kept working. She did her best to make some friends, proposing some games like pin the tail on the pony and even something exotic like playing space ponies and the tomato aliens, but nothing. Now she was feeling ignored and a bit sad. Mr. Voice has gone away, Henry's nowhere to be seen, and all the pretty ponies play dumb and don't want to talk to me. This is the worst city ever. Who cares about pretty horses and the nice trees if there's no fun in the first place? Why is every pony acting this weird? Puppy sighed. She knew for a fact that in each town there was at least a mayor or something like that. Maybe she could find the answer if she asked that pony. Usually, important ponies lived in the middle of town, and this was quite good, because finding the center of Sun City was easy for even a silly pony. The giant skyscrapers were quite hard to miss. The little fool trot past the residential area and arrived in a wonderful and well-kept block of tall buildings with the glass walls and picturesque statues of Celestia and Luna. Around the marbled princesses were fountains that spilled clean water, and a big middle tower stood right in the middle of everything, like a focal point for the whole city. Puppy lifted her head as she looked around the various buildings. There were half a dozen towers of various heights, but one of them stood out because of its shiny, metallic structure. It was like a spiral glowing into the sky for about twenty stories, then abruptly ending in a large platform, like an overgrown mushroom. This one seems easy. Puppy trod over to the tower, only to find herself being lifted off the ground and floated away from her destination. What? The fool tried to twist around and saw that an adult pony had picked her up by the back of her neck and was taking her away towards the residential area. Hey, let me go. Meanie pony, I want to go in the shiny tower. I gotta see the mayor. It's important, you dumb, wall-eyed pony. Are you listening to me? The pony put Puppy down just outside the city's borders in No Pony's Land, leaving the protesting foal still yelling at him. Sun City 2, Puppy 1. Day 8. Time, approximately 2 p.m. Location, Sun City, Big 52 SC Branch. Puppy spied on the working ponies with a resolute look on her face. They didn't want her in town and wouldn't tell her why, but she had to get inside somehow. Maybe she needed to play smart, with some sort of disguise using a sombrero or a poncho or maybe an accordion. Yeah, that could actually work. But where to find a fake mustache at this hour? Suddenly, the filly was distracted by another flying figure in the sky. She had grown used to pegasi flying to and fro around the city, but this one was different. It was a griffin. A little griffin with familiar armor. Henry! Hey, Henry! Wait! Nope. Even her best of best friends didn't listen to her now. Puppy would have felt disheartened if she wasn't busy finding a way to get Henry's attention. Rock! The Rock of Destiny floated up to Puppy's hoof, 
She took a moment to take aim and... Bullseye! The griffin unleashed a panicked screech as she dropped out of the sky. Like, well, the rock that hit her. Don't worry, I'm catching you, Henry. Puppy threw herself into a gallop, trying to catch her feathered friend before she hit the ground. In the meantime, Henry struggled desperately to regain control. But she was still stunned. All she could do was try to aim for something soft. But what? A yellow spot appeared in her peripheral vision. A yellow spot that was yelling and moving fast. I've got you! I've got you! Thump. Owie. Yowie. The young griffin blinked, looking at Puppy smiles. What the fuck are you doing here, Puppy? This place is dangerous. Run! There's a strange buzz that... Henrietta derped, and immediately stopped talking. A trickle of blood from her head injury running down her beak, but she didn't even seem to notice. Henry! I found you at last! Silky Tail told me that you were in danger, and... Hey! Where do you think you're going? The griffin opened her wings and was getting ready to take off, but the filly wrapped her hooves around Henry's neck and held on tightly. Don't even think about going away! Now, we're gonna get out of this stupid place and you're coming with me, hey? Henrietta was bigger and stronger than Puppy, and she seemingly felt no remorse in using brute force to push her away before taking into the air once more. The filly rolled head over heels a couple of times before finding herself sitting in a pile of rubble in No Pony's Land, alone once again. What the? What happened to her all of a sudden? The other day, she was all, let's work together, and then she was wounded, and I helped her, and now she scolds me and flies away? This isn't fair. Not fair at all. Very well. She doesn't want to be my friend, then I want Silky Tail back. Bubby galloped back into town, looking for her ex-friend, but almost immediately came to a stop and reconsidered her last thought. But I gave her Silky Tail as a present. I can't take a present back. But I want my friend back. At least one of them. Puppy shook her head. No. I want both of them back. I'm not going to go away without Henry and Silky Tail. I only need a better plan. But what plan? During the day, the ponies were all around the place and didn't let her walk into town. And during the night, the city was so scary. Or maybe not. After all, this wasn't a ghost city. The fool went back to sitting just outside the town borders and looking at the not-really-pretty ponies, working endlessly and mindlessly. She had come up with a masterful plan. Now she just had to recover the Rock of Destiny and wait for the night. Half hidden behind a pile of rubble, Puppy lurked, ready for the decisive strike. Soon... Sun City 3, Puppy 0. Day 8. Time, approximately 9 p.m. Location, Sun City Downtown, Big 52, SC Branch. The little filly crept through the dark, crawling on her belly with the ground and ears flattened. Sneaky, sneaky. She uttered a couple of whispered words, nothing more. Like these oriental ponies who did all the cool stuff that she was told about, but could never actually see because her mom said they were violent. Sometimes, mom was a pain. But none of that mattered now because Puppy was a filly on a mission. She had to focus and be super sneaky and move like a shadow in the night. Wearing a yellow suit and a pink glowing fishbowl. Sneaky, sneaky. The plan was easy. Go past enemy lines. Find the boss of the place, tell him this town stinks, then go find Henry, and run away into the sunset. Like in that super cool movie with Hon Wayne. Now, first things first. Poke her nose into the super pretty place with the skyscrapers, and have at least one ride on the elevator. Okay, let's get real. Ride the elevator till it melts. The city was completely empty during the night. No pony was out and somewhere else. Probably sleeping, but this time Puppy knew that there were no ghosts in this place. Only grumpy faces. Reaching downtown had been an easy task, and no pony blocked her way when she ventured deeper into the heart of Sun City. It was as if some pony had built a brand new town, ready for use, and moved away, leaving everything behind. The filly had never actually seen a brand new city, but she supposed that when you unpacked a new one, it looked just like this. The only place where Puppy could see the light was the Mushroom Tower, a faint blue glow coming from the black windows on the upper part of the tower 
sometimes crackling with an electrical bolt. A faint humming came from the metallic structure, like the one that comes from big electrical stuff that Mom didn't want her to touch because it was really, really dangerous. And when I say it, I mean it, puppy. Are you paying attention, puppy? Look at me and repeat what I said. This is not a toy, and I will never ever touch it. Sneaky, sneaky. Cautious exploration of the surrounding area of the tower revealed a closed entrance, and no open windows. On the dark glass doors was depicted the symbol of Solaris Inc. Puppy tried to open the door, then pull it, then ram it, and finally yell at it. Hey! How am I supposed to sneak inside a place if there's no way to get into it? Stupid tower! Why don't you cooperate? I'm the hero here, don't you know? As usual, Puppy had to do everything by herself. This was the price of being surrounded by amateurs. Rock! It was a glass door. Whenever the filly had played with a ball in the neighborhood, breaking windows was apparently a thing that happened if you didn't want it to happen. So if you actually wanted to break a glass window, then it had to be a piece of cake. Obviously, Puppy had never heard of bulletproof glass, so it took little more than she thought it would. When the glass of the door finally gave, detaching itself from the door's frame, Puppy took a long pause, admiring her work. The glass was similar to the one used in her helmet, crackling and changing its shape rather than simply falling down, so that a couple of good-placed hits were far from pulled the trick. Luckily, enough of the foal had learned to use the stone as her previous experiences, refusing to give up at the first difficulties and thus being rewarded with a hole right through the door. After half an hour of hitting and cursing as the glass against the glass panel, the filly was still panting when she stepped inside the building. At this point, she was so excited by her new adventure that she simply couldn't help giggling. With a giggle, she began to sing. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout, because I'm telling you why. Puppy Smiles is coming to town. It's unlikely that any pony was listening at the time in that place, but the filly felt as if it had to be done. After all, she was going to scold the bad mayor of a bad town. He'd better know what was coming for him. When the fool reached the large desk in the middle of the hall, a red light started to flash from the ceiling, and an automated voice came on to talk. Warning. Unauthorized drone presence in reception. All personnel, please stay in their offices. Security will take care of the emergency. Puppy had no idea what a reception or a drone was, but she already knew the meaning of the lullaby. Bully bots incoming. Hey, don't even try to bully me. I have a rock. Got it? The filly showed her favorite weapon and nope to no pony in particular and trot past the desk. A couple of turrets popped up from two big floor tiles and opened fire. But the only sound they made was that of empty magazines. Puppy looked up at the turrets with a puzzled expression, trotted towards the nearest, and poked it with a hoof. Yeah, you better behave. The filly stuck out her tongue and headed for the elevator, but it had a red light and didn't go anywhere. Her usual luck. She had to hit the stairs. This didn't prevent her from singing. She's making a list, checking it twice. She's gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Puppy Smiles is coming to town. The stairs were quite long, and it went past the identical floors, all filled with clean, empty rooms, as if they were ready to receive furniture that had never arrived. At the top of the stairs was a reinforced door, once again decorated with the company's logo. Puppy knocked at it with a hoof. Hey, I'm Puppy Smiles, and I wanted to see the mayor. This town stinks. When she didn't get a reply, she hit the door again and yelled louder. Don't ignore me! Every pony's ignoring me in this lousy place! Even my bestest friend ever! Even Mr. Voice! Why don't you want to make friends? Still nothing. But Puppy knew that the mayor was in there. Every pony knew that the mayor lived in the town hall, and right now it was night, so he had to be there because he was sleeping. And this time, the fool wasn't going to give up. She still had a thingy sandbox gave her. The strange remote control that opened doors by pressing a button. Thing that opens doors! Puppy raised a hoof as a bobby pin and screwdriver floated out in front of her. The filly looked at the job objects with disapproval. How am I supposed to open a door with these things? And the other one, the big black button, the red cables and the blue screen? Sandbox's hacking tool floated in front of Puppy, 
who gave a nod and grabbed it out of the air before looking at the door with her best menacing face. Very well, mister. I have a thing that can open this door. Lickety split, and you are going to open it, or I'll do it. And if I have to do that, I'll be very, very dis daisy pointed. When Mom was really, really angry, she used this super scary ultimatum, and Puppy knew that after that there was the spanking, so she was sure that this was going to work. The door resisted her threats. Okie dokie, let's do this the hard way. Puppy sighed and pressed the button on the hacking tool. The screen fizzled and started showing a cascade of numbers while a small vent behind it made a whistling noise. The screen flickered and crackled before turning green and almost immediately died with a puff of smoke. But the door opened. See? I told you so! The filly jumped inside the room and faced... A couple of skeletons? Hey! But there's no pony here! The large room was very similar to the control room of the dome, but it was circular and had windows all around its perimeter, so that it was possible to steal the whole city from here. There were several desks that, with computer terminals and big screens just in front of the door. All the screens were lit, glowing a dim blue light. The only sign of pony presence in the room was a pair of skeletons lying on the floor immediately in front of the door. Nope. Skellies weren't very scary. Suddenly, a deep, manly voice started talking out of nowhere. There's nothing for you here, Device 018. Now go away. The filly was confused, and looked around for the source of the voice. What? Where's the mayor? The voice replied with a neutral tone. There is no mayor. She died 19 years ago, and I have been taking care of Sun City ever since. This is no place for you. Don't test my patience. The puppy noticed the blue screens were blinking as the voice spoke. Oh, another voice. But a voice can't be the mayor of a town, silly bot. Uh, I already know a Mr. Voice, so I'll call you Blue Voice? This time, the voice boomed with it angrier like thunder. You are not meant to name things, and certainly not me, useless malfunctioning machine. I am soulless. I am the master of this sin city. Besides, voices have no color. Puppy waved a hoof dismissively at the last piece of information. Whatever. I'm Puppy Smiles, and I was looking for the pony in charge because this town is ugly, and I want my friends back. I already told you that there is no pony in charge here. I command this place. I am the boss. Mr. Number One. And if you think this place is ugly, listen to this. Before I arrived, this place was a war zone, with ponies killing each other and every sort of depravity performed in broad daylight. There were no sewers. The houses were a disaster, and ponies would die even from something as simple as giving birth to a new foal. Sun City was meant to be the best place ever. The eternal symbol of Solaris' superiority over Stablecheck and their lackeys. Do you have the slightest idea of the work that was needed to clean the radiation and build the half-decent barrier around this place to break the desert winds? Now Sun City is a jewel, a last shining ruby in a rusted crown. But it still stands, and I did that. Ponies proliferate under my guidance. Maybe they were depraved of their free will, but look at what they did when they had the power to choose their destiny. It was me that saved this place when it was falling apart. Me that rebuilt it from nothing but foundations, and me that saved hundreds of pony lives by forcing them to collaborate and live in harmony and peace. Now you, a puny, crazed little machine, come here. Break into my control room and treat me like a common computer, only to tell me that you don't like this place. You are nothing but a... Puppy snorted. Boring. You are a waste of time. Stop being irrational and go away immediately. Puppy giggled. <laughs> Blue voice is funny when he's mad. Enough. I have no time to spare for a broken piece of equipment. Go away. Ah, did you break something? Can I help you? Puppy tilted her head, a bit confused. 
No, stupid low-level artificial intelligence. You are the broken machine. Puppy Smiles giggled again. Silly voice. I'm a pony. You're a machine. Machines are stupid. Negative. You are a FESMK6 device 018. A piece of equipment meant for preserving the life of a pony in a hostile environment. Fitted with a basic artificial intelligence capable of making simple decisions in case of extreme danger. From what my scanning modules can tell, you utterly failed your purpose, and now you believe that you are the pony that you failed to protect. A female earth pony named Puppy Smiles. Puppy tilted her head, smiling. Blue voice has funny words. What is a envy roommate? The voice paused for half a moment, and when it came back, it had resumed its original, neutral tone. All right, you want to do this the hard way. You are not a pony. You are a robot. Go away and cope with it. You are not my time. Or worthy of my pity. This time, the filly frowned and took a couple steps back. I... I'm not a robot. I'm Puppy Smiles. No, you are not. Yes, I am, insisted the little pony. No, you are not. Yes, I am, Puppy screamed. No, you are not. Yes, I am. Puppy's flames flared inside the helmet. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Puppy frowned as soon as she realized what the voice had tricked her. Hey! Gotcha. If it was actually possible for a computer to smile, Solus would have been grinning from ear to ear. Now, go away, since you don't want to go away. I will give you the opportunity to do so. Activate protocol ES-01. Emergency shutdown and erase memory. Command line A. Zero one zero one one zero one one zero one bypass code easy gallop Luna nine zero six seven zero. Puppy blinked her eyes, a bit puzzled by the blue screen talking nonsense. The suit started showing strange numbers everywhere, and a big clock appeared in the middle of the HUD. This wasn't what bothered her the most. The voice made her seem like a fool. I am not a robot. I am not stupid. You are stupid, and I'll show you. Puppy rose a hoof. Teapot! A large tank shell with a blue band around the top floated out of her inventory. Trigger didn't want this shell because she said it was only dangerous for robots, so Puppy could keep it. The guard chief of Tunnel Town also explained how the foal could use it. Just pick something hard and hit the teapot head on it until it goes zap. Don't complain. I gave you opportunity to leave, but you did not listen, and I have a city to administrate. You can only blame yourself. Clank. The sound of something hard striking metal distracted Solus's monologue. What are you? That is a Meg Pulse 8.8 .8 grenade. What are you doing? Put that thing away. It will disrupt every computer in the control room. Puppy was mad. Mad because he made her seem like a fool. Mad because he said she was a robot. Mad because the city stole her best friend. Mad because... And just because. Yeah, right! I'm gonna put you to sleep for good! Who's a silly pony now? Clank. No. Wait. You'll destroy the behavior control center. The city will fall into chaos. Puppy was sitting on the floor in the middle of the control room. She didn't say anything and hit the tip of the shell with the rock of destiny. Yes. It was singing time. Clank. It was a silly pony. You're a silly pony. Who is it? You is, Puppy Smiles. Clank. Stop it. Stop it now. If that cha charge detonates, I won't be able to operate anything. It'll be forever locked inside the mainframe. The countdown was running on Puppy's HUD, leaving her at a single digit. But she couldn't read, so it wasn't her problem. Bumping into robots, knocking over ghoulies. Who is... You is, Puppy Smiles! Clank. No, wait. We can talk about this. You have no idea what you're doing. This utopia will crumble without my guidance. 
All day long you trot around looking for your mommy everywhere. Dreaming all of your pony dreams, but you get lost every time. Okay, okay, you win. I am the silly pony, so please stop. Clank. Zap. There was something that sounded like an explosion. Except this one didn't launch Puppy to the other side of the room. A nice surprise for once. The countdown to the helmet has appeared. The whole HUD disappeared, actually. Even every screen inside the big room went blank, and the lights flickered for a moment before turning red, and the voice finally stopped talking. Ah! Who is a silly pony now, blue voice? And why couldn't Puppy move at all? Nor speak, or even blink her eyes. She didn't feel pain, and she didn't feel tired. Nevertheless, she couldn't move. All she could do was look around, like that time in Canterlot or at the Dome, when the first time she'd met Miss Voice. But that time, it was really short. This time was different. There were no pink dots coming back to life on the HUD. Puppy waited for a while, but nothing happened. She lay sitting on the floor with an exploded tank projectile in front of her. The only thing she could do was sit there and hope for... Well, some miraculous rescuer. Sitting alone in the red light made her recall Solus's words. Maybe she was a robot after all. The grenade was supposed to shut down only the bully bots and worked on her too. But Puppy couldn't be a bully bot. Or she could? All she could do... Uh, after all, she wasn't a good pony. Breaking things and disobeying Mom was a bully thing. Mom. I'm a robot, and Mom must... Mom really... My mom, or is she a robot too? I don't eat, I don't drink. I almost never feel sleepy. So maybe... But I don't want to be a robot. I want to be a pony. This isn't fair. Why did that stupid blue voice have to say nasty things? I'm a pony. It's only that... I'm a pony. Yes, indeed you are. A beautiful, desperate pony. A feminine voice echoed in Puppy's thoughts. That surprised the filly and scared her. Who was talking? Oh, right. Introductions. I'm you. Puppy smiles. What a beautiful obsession you have. What delicious innocence. You can't be a robot at all, trust me. Yay, another voice. And she was also convinced that she was Puppy Smiles. The filly was even more confused. But the new voice told the filly that she was no robot. So, maybe she was a friend? Listen to me, little pony, because I'll tell you only the truth. You are a pony. If you weren't, I couldn't even exist. We went through centuries of sleep and days of hunger and delusion. But now you have fallen and I must intervene. Let me help you. Open your eyes and you won't be a hermit crab in a cracked shell anymore. Now Puppy was scared. This voice was talking weird, and she wasn't even sure what she wanted from her, but it felt wrong in a strange, itchy way. Simple minds are truly blessed. Pay attention. Accept my help, and you'll be out of this place and back on the road to finding your mother before the sun rises. Maybe it was a bad dream. Puppy had once dreamed of being unable to run very well or something like that. Then she woke up all wrapped in the sheets, and Mom arrived, hugging her and saying that she wasn't mad, even if she wet the bed and everything was going to be all right. Yeah, it's just a bad dream. No blue voice telling her bad things, and no ghostly voices scaring her in the dead, dark room with only the company of two skeletons. Oh, silly pony, you're not having bad dreams. You are a bad dream. But with some more insight, you could be better. With a resolve like yours, and such an obsession and stubbornness, we could be a nightmare. Puppy wasn't sure that this new voice was trustworthy. It wasn't the usual don't-stop-talk-to-strangers thing. It was more of a deep sense of cold and sadness that was emanating from it. Her instinct was screaming at her not to listen to the newcomer, but... But she was scared. And alone in the dark, and that little pony wasn't even sure she really was a pony at all. She wanted help. She needed help. She wanted Mr. Voice back. You're scared. If... It can't work if you don't accept me willingly. I can't help you as long as you won't open your eyes. But simple minds take time to accept new things. I'm going away, but soon we'll talk again. And I'm sure that the next time you'll ask me to show you how to become... better. Until then, take back your friend Mr. Voice as a sign of goodwill.
A pink dot flickered on the HUD, immediately followed by a torrent of lines that flashed across Puppy's helmet, while the internal software of the suit came back to life. Reboot complete. Checking version. Pink Suite 7.0 Light. Checking equipment status. All systems online. Resuming last session. Loading personnel data for Subject 001. Puppy smiles. Subject deceased. Condition stable. All clear. Footnote. Level up. 8. New perk added. Pack rat. Wait a moment. I think I have that. Carry weight is increased by 50 pounds. New quest perk added. Walking Nightmare. Rank 1. There's something more than simple purpose in the way you keep pursuing your goals. You are now highly resistant to EMP grenades.